Hi Year 3, it's Miss Hare here with this week's maths lesson. For today's lesson you are going to need um, a piece of paper, a pen or pencil and the chilli challenge sheets that we emailed out to you at the beginning of the week. Let's get started. To give you a clue about what we're learning about this week, I'm going to set you off on a little riddle. Okay, so the riddle is, I have hands but I have no arms, what am I? Pause the video and see if you can figure out what it is. What did you come up with? Ah, I'll tell you the answer. It was a clock. Well done if you got that right. So today we're going to be looking at telling the time. And we're going to be using one of these clocks. Does anybody know what they're called? Well done. It's called an analogue clock. So this is what we're going to be looking at today. Here is our learning objective for today's lesson. To read an analogue clock accurately. When we're learning about something, it's important to think about that big picture. Why are we learning about it? Now the time pretty much comes into every aspect of our lives. We, do, we tell the time every day. We need it to be on time for things like school or when you're an adult for work. We need it to manage our time, so think how long something is going to take us. Do we have time to do it now or do we need to do it later? It could be when we're doing cooking or baking, you need to know how long something's not got to stay in the oven and you need to know when to take it out. Also for activities, so lots of you probably do extra activities, you need to know what time they're on to make sure you can be there and you can take part. So there's lots and lots of different reasons why we need to be able to tell the time and hopefully after today we're going to be even more accurate at doing that. Right, our starter for today's lesson is to practice counting in our five times tables. Now you can do this game with somebody at home or you can do it on your own if everybody else is a little bit busy. So I've got somebody at home with me and they're going to play this game with me. We're going to go count up in fives, taking it in turns every time. Okay? Right. Five. Ten. Fifteen. Twenty. Twenty-five. Thirty. Thirty-five. Forty. Forty-five. Fifty. Fifty-five. Sixty. Well done. We made it all the way up to five times twelve. See if you can do it with someone and even challenge yourself to see if you can go backwards. Off you go. Hope you had a good go at that five times table practice. Can anyone tell me why we practiced our five times tables for today's lesson? Well done. It's because on a clock, we actually count our minutes in fives. So knowing our five times table will help us with today with telling the time. Here's a vocabulary you will need for today's lesson. Pause the video now and make sure you've got all these words written down. We've got minute, two, past, quarter, o'clock and half past. Make sure you've got these all written down now. Earlier we spoke about a clock having hands. Now they're not hands like me and you have, they're these hands here. So as well as all these numbers around the edge, which we'll talk about in a moment, they've got these two hands. Now the longest hand, it's not always in blue, that's why I'm saying the longest, tells you the minutes. So when you're looking at the long hand, you need to think that that's the minutes. The shorter hand is to, telling you about the hour. And if you can see on my clock, the blue longest minute hand, the numbers around the edge are also blue because that's the minutes. And this hour hand is red and these bigger numbers are also red because those are the hours. When the minute hand is pointing at the 12, it's o'clock. Now I can tell from this time that the hour hand is pointing to the two, which means it is two o'clock. See if you can have a go at these times. Pause the video and write down the time. What time is this? When the minute hand is pointing down at the six, it's 30 minutes past, which we call half past. Now, the hour hand has just gone past the three, which means it's half past three. See if you can have a go at these questions. Pause the video and write down this time. How about this one? Now here we can see that the minute hand is pointing at the three. 
Now if we imagine that this clock is just like a circle and you can cut it in half like we know when we get to half past, you can also cut it into quarters. Now from the 12 to the 3 would be one quarter, so it's actually quarter past. Now if we look at the hour, it's just gone past 11, so it is quarter past 11. See if you can have a go at these ones. Pause the video and write down the time. How about this one? Now here, the minute hand is pointing to the nine and it's only got a quarter to go until it gets back to o'clock. So we call this one quarter two. Now it's not quarter to 12, which hour is it nearly at? Well done, 11. So we would say it is quarter to 11. Have a go at these next few. Have a go at this one. Pause the video and write the answer down. Now we've recapped o'clock, quarter past, half past and quarter to, we're going to move on to telling the time to the nearest five minutes. So I've written two words, two and past, on the clock. And if you see, I've actually split the clock in half. Now, when we're telling the time, any minutes between the 12 and the 6 on this half, we say minutes past. Now, if we're telling the time and the minute hand is between the 6 and the 12 on the, this half, we say it is minutes to the hour. So let's start by looking at the time now. So we can see that the minute hand is pointing down here. Now on this clock, it tells me that's 25 minutes. However, if you were using a clock that didn't, you could count round in your fives, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, or, if you know your five times table, which I know most of you do, you could do five times five, which we know is 25. So that's 25 minutes, now it's in the past, 25 minutes past, and it's just gone past the 12, the hour hand. So it's 25 minutes past 12. Okay, let's try this one. So count the minute hand. Five. 10. So it's 10 minutes past, well done, 10 minutes past 5. Okay, I'm going to give you a few to have a go at on your own now. Pause the video and have a go at this one. Now try this one. Now, when we're looking at the minutes too, it does get a bit trickier because you can see on my clock, when it gets to 30, it keeps counting up in fives. But when we're telling the time to the minute two, we have to count how many minutes it is until it reaches o'clock. Like we do when we're at the nine, we say quarter two. So this one, although it says 50, we actually have to count how many minutes it will be until it gets to o'clock. So let's count in our fives. Five. 10. So it is 10 minutes to 2. 10 minutes to 2. Let's try this other one. Okay, so again, we're looking at minutes 2. How many minutes is it until this minute hand gets to the 12? See if you can count. Well done, it's 20 minutes. So we would say that this is 20 minutes to... What time is it nearly at? I well, don't nearly at the six. 20 minutes to six. Have a go at these next couple. Now we've looked at the time with five minute intervals, we're going to try and tell the time accurately to the nearest minute. So as you can see, my minute hand is in the past area. How many minutes is it past? Hmm, now it's a bit trickier because we can see it's 
gone past the five minutes past, but it's not quite at the 10 minutes past. Now, if we look closely, you can see these little dots. Now, these might be dots or dashes on a different clock. Each one of these is a different minute, one minute. So we can see it goes one, two, three, four, five, but it's got two more, so it goes six, seven. So it's actually seven minutes past four. Well done, seven minutes past four. Let's have a go at this next one. Let's look at this one. So we can see it's gone past the 15. Now we could count all the little dots from up there, but we can be a bit quicker than that. If we know it's gone past the 15, we can just count in our ones until we get to the right time. So we've got 15, 16, 17, 18. So it's 18 minutes past seven. Well done. Have a go at these next couple. Now things are going to get really challenging because when we're counting to the nearest minute two, we have to be even more accurate with our counting. So let's have a look at this time. Now you can see it's just gone past the 55, but remember when we're counting two, we have to count how many minutes it is until it gets to o'clock. So we need to count how many of these minutes it is until it reaches the 12. So it's got one, two, three, four minutes until it gets to o'clock. So it's four minutes to, look at that hour hand, three, well done, four minutes to three. How about this one? Now instead of counting all the little dots this time, I'm gonna start at the o'clock and count to the minute hand, because I can count in my fives that way. So I'm gonna go five, 10, and then one more is 11. So it's 11 minutes until it gets to o'clock. So 11 minutes to five. Have a go at these next couple. Well done with all that work on telling the time. You've tried really hard. Now, I have sent over some chili challenge sheets which I'd like you to have a go at. There are some problem solving questions for chili three, as well as lots of telling the time questions for chili one and chili two. I'd like you to have a go at those. I've also sent across the answers. Now, please don't look at the answers until you've had a really good go at the questions. Remember your perseverance with these because it can get a little bit challenging. Okay, let's find out who was top of the leaderboard on TT Rockstars and Math Shed. Okay, for this week's Math Shed results, well done to John in 3C, who's first of the leaderboard. Well done to Jordan in 3H, Alfie S in 3P, and Isabel PL in 3B. Now these ones at the side are which position the class is in, in the whole school. So well done to 3B, your third out of the whole school classes. 3C your 4th, 3H your 7th, and 3P your 30th. Let's see if we can get that up by next week. And a special mention to John P, who is second out of all the children in the school, and Isabel, who is third out of all the children. But well done to everybody who's been on Math Shed. Keep it up. And well done to those who've been on TT Rockstars. The person who's got the most coins in the last week is Tyler W from 3P. And the person who has improved their speed the most is Isabel C in 3B. So well done. There were so many of you who've got 100% accuracy. There was too many to write on my board. So well done. Keep up the good work.